feel like I look like I'm literally about to ascend into heaven. Why am I so bright? Do you see it? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Ascend into heaven. <laughs> Jesus is literally coming for me. Do you think that's better? It's literally so far away and I haven't gotten my vision checked in years. I think it's better. You think? Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> oh, I got to turn myself up a little bit. No, nah, I feel like, well, just a little bit. Well. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Ready? Yeah. You start us off. You know the intro. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome Action. to all things. Welcome to all things internet, the show that usually has to do with the internet. And Emily does her gosh darndest to fact checked and researched most things i feel like you kind of crushed that i forgot another like usually but i don't it's remember. uh welcome back to all things internet the show where we talk about things we see on the internet that usually have to do with the internet and emily tries her gosh darnest to fact check and research things that i find relevant there you go i feel like that was really good yeah that was I feel like that was spot on um our dog of the day today is Blaisdefer. Blaisdefer, he's going to jump up on the bed. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see him lounging on my bed. Um, this episode's going to be a little different because our sweet and precious Miss Rachel Ballinger is in New Zealand. Lucky Rachel. Lucky Rachel. So um, it is Joy is filling in for Miss Rachel today, and she stole my side. <laughs> As I always do. Literally, last time people commented, and they're like, this feels very strange to watch. because well, I they they got to get used to it because the left side is my side. The left side is my side. When I'm here, you're always here. Fair, fine, <laughs> whatever. I mean, she's doing us a favor by being on here and me not just rambling by myself for 45 minutes. So I suppose you can have the left side, but. And I always call it. That's the rule. When somebody it calls, is the rule. And you never remember until I, I call know. it and you're like. Ew. I know. Literally, I put the chairs up and then she goes, I call the left side. <laughs> so that was great for me. Um, but yeah, my left side's my good side. And I look significantly different on my right side. I like, think you're making it up. It's not. And a lot of people are like, oh, body, what is it? Body dysmorphia? Yeah. No. Literally, if I look at pictures of myself in the, on the left, I'm like, oh, a goddess. She's amazing. <laughs> people don't even deserve to be in the same room as her. I look at my right side. I'm like, oh, <gasps> put me back into bake That's for another four months. That's how I feel about my left and right side too, though. That's why I, I don't, know. you're very symmetrical. Yeah, no. You are. Yeah, no. So, um, but I'm not. Also, there was a show and it scarred me for life. I feel like a lot of TV and movies uh, when we were growing up shaped all of the toxic thinking that I have. Yeah. Because there was a show that I watched. It was like on MTV, I think. And it was called Are You Hot? Or like the science, the science of hotness or something like that. And basically they brought in a bunch of people that volunteered and, and claimed, like self-proclaimed that they're like these very attractive people. And they had scientists literally measure their attractiveness. And apparently attractiveness, according to the show, was boiled down to symmetry. Okay. And I have no symmetry on my face. I think what messed me up, too, is figuring out that a lot of the dating profiles have like an AI g generation, generate whatever thing where basically like it rates like your hotness. So like it what? puts you in the category of like of the same people like of <gasps> hotness. So you'll never really see anyone that's like hotter than you based on that kind of science do you think they do that as a self-esteem boost or because they want people to match and their site be successful i don't know i just think it's messed up because i think if you had users that got on and constantly were swiping right is where you want them uh, swiping on people that they want to match with that are significantly hotter than them and obviously they're not getting matched back because no one is looking at your personality on a dating site I think they would lose users. Yeah, maybe. But isn't beauty in the eye of the beholder, right? So Not on dating sites. Yeah, you have I like guess. two seconds to impress someone. Uh, and yeah, then you're done. True. Yeah. So. I wonder what AI would say about us. You're so hot. <laughs> Thank you. We talk about this. Oh, I talk about this. 24-7. <laughs> My girlfriend and I talk about how hot Joy is. Yeah, 24 7. You. you guys are both hot, too. She is very attractive. All of us are beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, today's well, welcome to all things internet. <laughs> um, so yeah, today's gonna be a little different. Rachel's missing. Joy's filling in. We're also filming at my apartment. So if you're watching on YouTube, clearly the background. And I can't figure out how I want to hold this mic comfortably. I absolutely hate this right I now know. in my hand. Yeah, because uh, Rachel, you were I'm like, I'm like double fisting it. Yeah, I'm holding it like an ice cream cone. Yeah, I'm holding it like a sub that I'm about to launch into my mouth. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Rachel, uh, where was I going with this? Rachel brought all the equipment over to my house because I'm dog sitting Blaze. She has someone 
well her friend is uh, the friend that's been living with them Devin is staying at the house and watching uh the little dog and Snoop and so Rachel thought it'd be nice just to bring all the equipment over here so I didn't have to go back and forth every single day um and what we failed to recognize is that we have a whole studio set up for this podcast at Rachel's. Yeah, it was not a very good idea. It took me an hour <laughs> to clear out an SD card, to figure out the camera, to figure out the lighting, to get the computers up and running. Yeah. Joy has been very patient. But yeah, so the, the background is different. The co-host is different. And surprise, my parents are in town. Woo-woo. So they're sitting on the couch, not but five feet away from me, <laughs> listening intently to my podcast and watching me work. I feel like it's like bring your parents to work day. It is. Yeah. I'm like, look, mom, are you watching? It's mom? a very intimate day. Yeah. Mom, did you see that? Mom, mom, you weren't looking. Mom, mom, did you, you know? Yeah. That's what I feel like right now. Mm-hmm. So um, do she's you, in the background cheering you on. And my dad is taking pictures on his cell phone. So proud of his girl. <laughs> he is so Look proud at the of his famous girl. YouTuber. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, my parents are uh, they're visiting from Virginia. My whole family's from the East Coast, from you know, like Virginia, Pennsylvania area. And East Side. What e- do you say? Like, what do we say? We're West Side. 757 is what we say. All right. It's bad. 757. Is that what our phrase is? What's our phrase? My mom says we don't have one. Mm. So, Anyway, um, so they're visiting from the East Coast because I haven't seen them since October. I was supposed to go home for Christmas and then couldn't for reasons. And then um, I was supposed to go home for my birthday in May. And then my dog just rudely decided to die. So didn't go she home didn't then. Die. She didn't She took a long vacation. She's on a vacation, yeah. And she like hasn't checked in in a while. So actually, she's right back there. And you didn't say hi to her when you came in. Actually, I did. You did? Yeah, I just Aww. didn't want to make you sad. Oh, and did you say hi to Molly too? Always. Yeah. When people come into my apartment, I bring them the urns and I make them say hi to my dead dogs. <laughs> <laughs> it's not awkward at all. So anyway... <laughs> So please enjoy. You put, you put the urn on, on spot. Go to spot. <laughs> Take it for a walk. Put the, put the leash on the urn. Daisy, sit. Daisy. Oh, my God. Why would that be the best humor, though? Like on TikTok? I, mean, I was going to say that's like a TikTok yeah, video. Yeah, take her to the park. Oh, my God. Just throw she a ball at the urn. Yeah. It just bounces right off. <laughs> uh, not friendly. Not frisbee. Nothing happened. No, I'm carrying around the urns. I'm like, not friendly. <laughs> so anyway. <sighs> I'll bring wow. my dogs too that my you are in there dog. no oh, right and my unalived you're unalived yeah and you can't forget your chameleon too yes yeah he wants to see the out the great outdoors as well yeah so I'll bring his as well yeah maybe we'll just have like a little urn party <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh this is me and Joy's friendship we're very morbid so how are you today great thank nice. you for asking I can't say the word today today how are you today today <laughs> um no and this I, week and oh yeah that's me and rachel's new thing on on the podcast is we start the first 10 ish minutes and we do therapy hour oh nice yeah. would you like to um, why not okay trauma dump three two one go you first oh okay wow what do i need to trauma dump about today i don't even know and i haven't had therapy no that's a lie okay you want to know what i learned in therapy this week yes. i haven't had therapy the past few episodes i've talked about how i hadn't had therapy for a hot minute because my health insurance switched and they couldn't catch up and Ooh. and so they were charging me like 140 a session for 60 minutes oh my Atlanta. meanwhile with my health insurance therapy was like ten dollars which oh my is gosh. freaking and it's 140 when like doesn't the therapist cut it off after like 10 or 15 minutes so they can have like a it doesn't go the full hour right mine's normally ther- your therapy sessions will only be about 45 minutes to 50 minutes if you're lucky because they do need the last 10 minutes to like write I was gonna notes. say 140 an hour but i mean it's so expensive therapy is so expensive which brings us to our sponsor for today i'm just kidding <laughs> better at- no they don't get a shout out if you don't pay you don't get a shout out um but yeah no uh my therapist i'm very much a talker if you guys hadn't picked up on that wow (laughs) what a shock uh so my therapist i just when i get towards the end i start getting panicky and i just talk faster (laughs) oh my god she's about to leave me yeah (laughs) yeah exactly i talk faster and faster and faster so and i literally do not take a breath so there's no chance to cut me (laughs) off i swear one time she faked that her internet went out (laughs) Because we were maybe running like three minutes over, but I had to get it out. I was like, no, that's out. I you have call to her tell back. Her. Keep ringing. Did I? I have three minutes left. Yeah. Her internet was down and she couldn't get it back up. All right, Susan. I mean, yeah, right. Name's not Susan. Please don't look her up. But um, yeah. So anyway, I haven't had therapy in a hot minute because they were charging me too much. But then we got it figured out. I think I need to check my bank statement. But 
desperately needed therapy last week. So I went for the first time in a few weeks. And the thing I learned in therapy was that I was bringing past issues from past relationships into my current relationship instead of starting fresh, which I feel like everyone does. Everyone does. How do you not? I mean, that's the whole point of life is you learn things that are negative or positive and you apply that going forward. Right. That's how we survive. Right. And so I was like. I think the most important part, though, is that you're aware of it. So you can catch yeah. yourself doing it and talk to yourself about it or even your partner about it. Yeah. Well, and, and I, was, uh, I was telling my therapist, I was like, this happened. I don't understand why I was triggered by it because like there was no malice behind the actions, but I was very triggered by it. And I think it's because my ex used to da 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 da. And my therapist was like, I'm going to stop you right there. She was like, you're allowed to explain to yourself like, you're entitled to your feelings. You know, we have learned this time and time again over the past few years. Your feelings are valid. You can't help your feelings. It's how you express those feelings. Right. And so she was like, if she does something that's triggering because it reminds you of your ex, then you're allowed to be like upset and angry internally. Yeah. And like if you need to go like journal it down or like call a friend and vent, whatever. But she was like, you cannot jeopardize your current relationship because you're bringing past traumas into it. She deserves a clean slate. She has not wronged you in this area. Right. Like, don't. I feel like you and I have kind of talked about that. Yeah. Ourselves. Yeah. I'm not going to share very many details. Oh. But like. Well, then. You know, just when we're going through relationships and like how they're different, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. in good ways or, you know, not the best ways, you yeah. know, but like kind of regrounding yourself and realizing like, OK, what are the best parts of it? And the things that you feel like um, aren't what you expect them to be like, you know either can get there or it's just it's so much better with this person (laughs) yeah it's a lot of comparing yeah but again i feel like that's very natural totally our like our job as humans is to like to observe and compare and take notes and so like and that's just the world we live in with technology and social media Mm -hmm. and yeah yeah so it's really hard to like stop yourself so she was like you're allowed to be triggered but you're not allowed to like bring that up with her Mm -hmm. if nothing harmful was done right like if this was just like a like a you problem yeah if it's a me problem she was like yeah call a friend journal whatever but then you also need to rationalize with yourself like you're you're being triggered because of someone else's actions not because of her actions and like don't punish her because someone else did that what do you do though if it keeps bothering you oh then you talk about it okay okay. yeah so and i mean that's that's how you just live with it yeah (laughs) just suffer in silence that's what susan always tells me to do it's not what most married people do exactly no (laughs) offense mom and dad (laughs) <laughs> um also p.s what is the key to happy marriage because how long have you been married 45 my parents have been married 45 wow. years would you say you're in a happy marriage my mom says of course and um, mom come here just you, you won't be on camera my mom is very camera shy which i don't know i again mailman baby you can confirm or deny mom but there's something about me where i love attention and my mom does not okay what what's the key to happy marriage shared sense of humor shared sense of humor and dad what what's your answer yes dear (laughs) my dad is the happy wife happy life exactly he is the walking poster child for happy wife happy life yeah all right i like that okay your turn to trauma dump go trauma dump well i mean i feel like i've been doing pretty well considering you know my mom passed away so okay i didn't know if we were gonna share that yeah we've been dealing with that and um I'm just dealing with that. <laughs> I feel like that is enough. Yeah. You know, you don't really need something else on top of that. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. Uh, Joy's mom passed away just yeah. two, two, three weeks, three weeks ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. She'd been sick for a while. She had cancer for like eight years. Um, it wasn't really the cancer that did it, though. She, um, it was just her body just kind of giving out and yeah. stuff like that, you know. So, it was time, I guess you could say. But, yeah. yeah dealing with that. Yeah, that's a lot to deal with. And and what are we doing to cope? Um, I think, well, without getting too much into it, I think it's a lot to deal with in, in the sense of where like um, this is going to be hard out of context, but like I'm not that emotional about it. Mm-hmm. And one, I think it has to do with the fact that she was sick for a long time, too. We did not have a good relationship. So um, I think I spent the majority of my life mourning my mom already, mourning mm-hmm. her because I had to mourn the fact that she'll never be the mom that you I wanted her to be. Yeah. yeah. And then I had to mourn the fact that like she could die any year because of the yeah. cancer, you know. So and I really I would say within the last two years, like really got to a better point where I didn't 
care about her approval. I didn't care about her love. I didn't care about her seeking out her attention. Like I was already in like such a good place with that, that I think that's why this isn't like affecting me so much. But I think the hard part is like seeing the way it affects my sisters and stuff like that. So, you know, just you're the like joy is genuinely the biggest empath I have ever met in my entire life. So like even yeah, just like you said, even if you're okay with something, if you see someone like flicker with a tiny bit of emotion, yeah. you you take that on yourself yeah. and you feel the need to fix it. I did have a little bit of guilt like the first two weeks as I felt like I should be more sad, you know, but like there's no but just but I think that's a natural response. Yeah. And then just me like mentally reminding myself like, well, this is why I feel this way and I'm valid for feeling this way and mm-hmm. just continually continuing to like support myself in the way yeah. that I feel. You know, because of course, like people who some people who are close to me who know more of the details about my family will say things like, well, I'm sure, you know, like at the end of the day, she loved you. And it's like, well, did I? Yeah. So yeah. It's like those little comments. And I think like, um, you know, some people will say too, do you feel like or no, some people will say, oh, just wait, like after the memorial or after this, like it's probably going to hit you really hard. And I, I genuinely don't think it's why do people feel to. the need to say that? Yeah. So I think just like reminding myself like everybody has their own way of like dealing with things there's no right or wrong there's no way. right or wrong way like there's no expectations of anyone else that you have to meet as far as like dealing with this situation yeah so you know yeah i mean this is this is something that our friend group has talked about a lot because a lot of people within like our close circle have crappy parents mm-hmm. and like we've talked about it time and time again that it's almost i don't know i don't want to compare but it's a very hard situation when you know that you deserve certain parents yeah and like you want them to act a certain way and you want them to show up a certain way and they don't it's literally you're mourning the death of your parents yeah. while they're still alive yeah because you're like you have to either cut off a relationship with them or like you cut back on the relationship with them and you're like i deserve these types of parents like because we didn't ask to be born right and no offense mom we're adopted <laughs> or, or adopted <laughs> Um, and I also like I have to give these people some grace, too, because a lot a lot of people don't genuinely know the depth of like my relationship yeah. with my family and stuff like that. So they're coming from a good place. So, yeah. You know. All right. So don't bring past traumas into current relationships. I mean, obviously, like I always talk to her about it. Like I'm like, oh, I think I was a little triggered by this. You're not doing anything wrong. But I think I was a little triggered by this because like this happened and like because I just need to like yeah. tell someone and your about gr- it. But your girlfriend's also good at re- like having conversations, she's, receiving information. Oh my God, I she's say not this like a reactive, defensive. No, person. I say this twenty four seven. She, we have the best communication. Mm-hmm. It's amazing, and I'm very thankful for it. But yeah, so no past traumas into current relationships. There's no right or wrong way to grieve or mourn. Yep, and. I think that was it. Thank you for coming to our therapy corner. And you're beautiful even if you're not symmetrical. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I needed to hear that today. (laughs) Um, All right. I think we will check to see if we have a sponsor. And we we couldn't nail this last time. Let's let's try it. We're going to try and harmonize. You want to count us down? Yeah. Because Rachel always goes, I think, uh, no. You go high, I'll go low. You go, I go high, you go low. Okay, because Rachel always goes, and we're going to check to see if we have a sponsor today. Sponsor. Oh, oh, I thought okay. you were like telling them first and then oh. we we're going to do Okay, do oh, it again. I just thought Set you it up. Like, Set okay. it up. Whatever, whatever. Okay. And now we're going to check to see if we have a sponsor. 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 I think that was pretty good. That was okay. Yeah. All right. That was pretty good. <laughs> Should we talk about some actual internet news? Absolutely. On our podcast about the internet? Oh, can we start with the weird stuff you found? Yeah. Okay. We talked about this last time Joy was on the podcast. Joy and I are obsessed with like weird, strange, <laughs> morbid news stories. And because Rachel's not here, mahaha, we get all the control. Joy found some weird news stories on the internet. So it counts. Yes. And we wanted to inform you just so that you can be, you know, just okay, as knowledgeable. So I'll read the headline first and then I'll read the little like caption that's okay. along with it. So it says, airline fine $15,000 after worker gets sucked into the engine and dies. I have so many questions, but go. I I, I really, in my head, I just see this like cartoon Uh image played out where this person's just strolling along, like chucking in suitcases. And then, yeah, they just get vacuumed. I see the the scene out of The Incredibles where she's like, no capes, because he gets like sucked in. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I have have questions. um, uh, Regional. What is that word? Subsidiary. Thank you. Of American Airlines. Wait, wait, hold on. Did I say it right? Subsidiary Subsidiary of American Airlines is facing a $15,000 fine after an airline worker was violently ingested 
by the engine of the landed plane. After a thorough investigation by the Occupational Safety and Hazard Association, multiple hazards were detected, which could likely cause death or serious injury to the employees. The airline worker, uh, Courtney Edwards, is, is, oh, is survived by her three children mm-hmm. and her mother. A GoFundMe page has been set up and has raised close to $120,000 so far. Okay, first of all, whoever wrote that, did you really need to use that language? Right. Ingested, Hon- ingested. by the airplane. That now was- I'm picturing the airplane being like a cartoon character and just going, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. right. It was very graphic. Yeah, you could have just. That's so sad, though. I know. Imagine just the- being at work one day. Like you do every day. Right. And you just get sucked into an engine. I didn't even know that was possible. Okay, I saw it and I have a terrible fear of flying because I've had the worst experiences on airplanes. I think I've talked about this a little bit. But yeah, but yeah on one airplane, we had to make an emergency landing because we like ran out of, my mom was with me, we ran out of gas or something because there was like a fog bank. We couldn't get through. The other flight I went on, it was 24 hours to Africa. Our AC broke. And so... <laughs> Everyone was just trapped in this hot box of a plane Mm-mm. until we landed. And like, I don't know, bad turbulence in Thailand. I, I've had really bad plane experiences. And then, of course, I saw this headline that was talking about it was a South, allegedly, because I can't remember, but I'm going to say allegedly it was Southwest. I think you just say Southwest because you hate Southwest. I do hate Southwest. <laughs> Unless you want to sponsor me and then I love you. <laughs> um, but Southwest, someone's window. Um, Oh, I think I saw something like that, too. This was a few years ago, and the woman almost got sucked out through the window mid-flight, and her seat partners grabbed her and held her until they could... I don't know what they did. The one I saw was that the emergency exit door (gasps) came off, and they had to make a landing. And the people that... They had to give, like, oxygen to the people Mm -hmm. that were by the door and everything. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it was crazy. And they had videos of the landing. It was crazy. No. Did you see that that one plane video that was viral? (sighs) See? Internet news. Uh, I'm just going to keep justifying why we're talking about morbid things on an internet podcast. (laughs) Um, Did you see that one video? It was a few years back, maybe, like, over, like, 10 years, where this plane was trying to land and its front wheel was turned sideways. Yes. Yes. And they landed. And they landed it safely. But they had to, like, bounce. But so okay, scary. if I have fellow airplane fear flyers out there, one, let's start a club. Two, <laughs> what I learned the other day, because, and this is why I love TikTok. There is a pilot on TikTok and he goes on there and he basically makes videos about like, he'll show you like the inside of the crafts, he'll debunk myths, you know, whatever. And he posted this one video the other day saying that in, in all of aviation history, only one plane has gone down due to turbulence. Oh, really? And so he was like, you really have no need to be scared of turbulence because it, it will not crash the plane. Right, right. Unless it jiggles something so hard that like a piece falls off, which like how would... Uh, I think turbulence will always be scary. It's always scary. Being in the air in an airplane and it's shaking around will always be scary. That's why I get so irrationally angry when people are like, you're more likely to die in a car accident than the airplane. At least the car accident's instant. The yeah. airplane, you're like, in some Ew. cases. Yeah. 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 Uh, best case scenario, you know? I yeah. The thing is, is like, I don't want to be scared when I'm dying. Yeah. So if I'm going to die, I need it to be like instant. Yeah. And like, I don't want to know it's coming. With an airplane, yeah. you're scared like the last 60 seconds. No. Well, no I mean, that's you. pretty fast though. 60, 60 seconds. 60 seconds, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. I still don't want it. <laughs> Nobody wants it. Nobody wants it. <laughs> All right. Anyway. OK, so that right, is really one. that is really sad. I'm So I was just assuming she was like walking. You know how people walk the plane to the runways yeah. and maybe they turn the engine on something and it, like that. Yeah. Oof, that's yeah. awful. That is. And, and you said it said in the article that they knew ahead of time that something was wrong, but they didn't do anything it, about it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a GoFundMe. So if you want to donate to her family, yeah, we can put the link down below. Yes. Yeah. So the next story. Um. Billionaire family is seeking a live-in dog nanny for $127,000 a year. Joy, you need to hop on Sign that. me up. Can I yeah. bring my animals? Probably not. Can I bring my boyfriend? Probably not. If so, I'm your person. Yeah. <laughs> it says a U.S. billionaire family, a bil- yeah, billionaire family based in the U.K. has gone viral after posting a job opening for full-time dog nanny with a salary of $127,000 a year. Our returning client is seeking an exceptional and highly experienced dog nanny to provide top tier care for their two beloved dogs reads the job on LinkedIn description. They are truly looking for someone at the top of their field who can ensure the overall well-being, happiness and safety of their dog. 
position posted by Fairfax and Kingston Household um, Staffing Agency states that the person selected would live with the family in Knightsbridge District in London and provide unparalleled care and attention to the dogs, treating them as valued members of the family. If I had a billion dollars, I too would look for a $127,000 dog nanny. I mean, I'd probably look for somebody to like pick up their dog crap and like, I guess maybe bathe them. But like, I really enjoy all this stuff with my dog. So if I was a billionaire, I would have more animals and a farm. (laughs) Yeah. And I'd be caring for them all. I feel like caring for my animals, like it is the best part because I feel like that's how you bond with them the most. And it's so therapeutic. And like, I mean, I could be wrong here, but why have animals if you're just going to pay somebody to do all this stuff? that you need to do for your animals i've always you know because I, I, I know some people do it like for protection I, yeah like, I, t- I totally get like hiring a dog walker when you yeah. need it i get like getting groomers i get that but like live in to do it all like what i'm yeah. assuming is like all the time like why have them then because at that yeah. point those dogs aren't their dogs it's the live in nanny's dogs technically like oh because like i could see them wanting to like Let's say this billionaire has to like hop on planes very last minute with his family and go like travel around the world. It would be nice to have someone living with you where you're just like, all right, we're leaving for the weekend. Well, think of it kind of like a live in nanny. Like, tell me if I'm wrong. Don't the kids usually end up a bonding with the nanny more? No, never. <laughs> <laughs> I was if you don't know, I was a nanny for 10 plus and I mean, years. I don't think there's anything do. wrong with with nannies. You know, I think yeah. anything too much of anything is bad. Right. So as long as it's a moderation, I feel like as long as they do still walk their dogs. They do still play the, with their dogs. They yeah. do still do things with their dogs, you know? Yeah. But $127,000 a year, I'm feeling like they're doing everything. Yeah. Yeah, that so you're I, right. I just, yeah. I couldn't wrap my head around that. Like, if you're willing to spend that much money, like, why have them? Maybe it was, like, the billionaire guy, his mom passed away and <laughs> left a dog to him that he didn't want. And now he's like, I don't want to deal with this. What's a normal amount of money that you give a dog sitter? And the wife is like, I don't know. Like that would be understanding. 120 or 175,000, mm-hmm. you know, maybe. That would be understanding. But probably it's not mm-hmm. that scenario. I also think it's a lawsuit waiting to happen because you can't guarantee anything. So the live-in dog nanny better make sure they have some contracts written up because you never know. What if you're out walking the dogs one day and a stray dog comes by and attacks them and oh. one of the dog dies or whatever like yeah you could be held liable for Ooh, that yeah I, what if you have a swimming pool and you're sitting out with the dogs you're not watching and something bad happens to the dog in a swimming pool if like, you're getting paid one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, you better be watching that dog while you're sitting out by the pool <laughs> but things happen yeah 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 that's true okay any other weird news stories that were found on the internet this let week? me see Oh, this one. NASA spots green light on Jupiter and captures an image. What's like the text underneath? The text underneath. It says a NASA spacecraft snapped a picture of a green light glowing on Jupiter. The space agency released um, the snap last week after it was captured by NASA. Juno mission as it completed its 31st. mm, 31st close by close flyby of Jupiter on December 30th, 2020. It reveals the huge swirling pattern of Jupiter, which is a gas giant. But in the middle of the photo, there's a random circle of green light glowing brightly. Aliens. Yep. In, in, instead, the light, the light is thought to have been caused by a bolt of lightning, which struck near the planet's North Pole. The government would say that. Right. I mean, uh, it's like one glowing green light. Right. And when have you ever seen green lightning? Yeah. Maybe Jupiter Why has different green? colored lightning. Because but... of the gases or something. Yeah. Oh, that was also, Joy and I were talking about this a little bit in the car, but uh, that viral video that was going around and then got suppressed. Oh, yeah. Okay. So on TikTok, when did it come out? Like two weeks ago? Something like that. Yeah. And it has been wiped. Like there are people that obviously recorded it because when something really strange happens, people are going to record the recording right. in case it gets wiped, which it did. But yeah, what I mean, do you know? I know that like they had seen the reports of something being seen like flowing, flying through the air and like it, they people were calling the police about it in and then Texas, Texas. Okay. And then supposedly something landed in their backyard. So the people who have the backyard, they called the police and were like, we think there's something in our backyard. They're like 10 feet tall. They look weird, mm-hmm. you know. And so um, the only re- the guy said the only reason why he dispatched police was because they were getting in these like calls. And mm-hmm. one of the police officers had seen the light in the air themselves. And it's on body cam footage yeah. from the police. Like, yeah. how are you going to deny that? Because when people like post alien stuff online, I'm like, oh, you're you're doing it for yeah. clout and views, you know, whatever. Which, I mean, get your bag. I don't care. Right. Um, but I, I always take it with a grain of salt. 
But this, it was like released body cam footage. The policeman was literally wearing basically a GoPro on his chest and caught the whole thing. Yeah. He was sitting and in. And there's a video of them just like walking and like walking into the backyard. You don't see anything and you just quickly kind of see something. But the way they react and just turn around yeah. and they're like, let's get out of here. Yeah. So I saw it two weeks ago on TikTok. It was um, my favorite. I think she's an astrophysicist or... I think she's an astrophysicist. She worked for NASA for a really long time, but um, she'll she'll come online and I follow her. She'll come online and like explain space things in very simple terms that yeah. normal people can understand it. Yeah. And she was basically talking about this video and she never talks about anything conspiracy or anything like that. But she was like, yeah, I don't know this what to do about weird. it. Yeah. So basically you see in the video on the bot, the police body cam footage. And as the body cam footage is playing there, they have overlapped the audio of the 911 call where this like teen boy is calling in and being like something crash landed in our backyard. There are beings in our backyard. Yeah. They are tall. They're coming towards us. Please send help. We don't know what to do. And of course, him and his little brother, after they got off the call, ran to the backyard with their cell phones to right. start recording everything, which I would too, honestly. I would be crapping my pants. I would be hiding under the bed. I'd be in the <laughs> fetal position. I'd be crying. I'd be grabbing my vlog camera, running no, out there. all the alien movies I've seen, I would be so so yeah, my scared. thing is, is if they wanted to hurt us they would have done it by now mm, it's just such a big chance to take it'd be so scary um, aliens i mean i can do ghosts i can do no i can do all of that other stuff i aliens have always scared me when Why? i was younger if i ever watched et i oh. like wouldn't be able to sleep for the longest time i wasn't allowed to watch et because i wouldn't stop crying <laughs> during <laughs> during the science scene i wasn't allowed to watch Bambi she's like I don't remember that yeah my mom banned Bambi in the house Fox and the Hound it was too sad she says and then there were certain movies like I wasn't allowed to watch the ending of E.T. I couldn't watch a lot of things yeah I'd cry I I couldn't stop crying and then I wouldn't sleep in my own bedroom because I'd be too scared yep I wasn't allowed to watch Harry Potter but I could watch (laughs) Lord of the Rings (laughs) (laughs) okie dokie oh cute did you not go witchcraft is the devil I was gonna say did you not go trick-or-treating either no okay great Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> we spent Halloween at church. <laughs> Halloween me. was a family holiday, obviously. Oh, my God. Um, but yeah. And then so you see this giant green blob flying through the air, mm-hmm. crashing into the backyard. You see all this like smoke and debris come up. And then you, they continue showing the body cam footage where the police officer is walking with the family into the backyard. Mm-hmm. And that's basically where the story stops. And yeah. then we stopped hearing from the family. So I and you know there's more body cam footage. So yes, yeah, because how are you going to walk right to the like fence of the backyard and right. then the body cam footage cuts out? Right. Um, you're just saying you turned it off right at the most exciting part? Right. No. That's how it always happens. Right. I mean, I know that they do it to like not cause like mass panic or whatever, but it's really annoying. At yeah. this point, we all know aliens exist. The Pentagon. Do you believe in the conspiracy that the um so I've got that, to the gover- that. that the government's going to have like fake some sort of alien invasion? To, um, like, what is it called? Code. Oh, code. It's, oh. Uh, it's something. Oh, that's going to bother me. Um, I don't believe they're going to go that far, but like it does exist. Yeah, it is in CIA documents. I have to look it up real quick because, you know, I, I, I can't let it go. It's called. Um, can you or they're in like conspiracy with aliens. We're like, hey, can you just come down here to scare them a little? <laughs> Can you just like whip them back into shape real quick? It's like sending like good cop, bad cop. They're like, we have lost control of our children. Yeah. Please go in there and yell at them for a little bit. Right. Um, Can you just like a a a couple people in the middle of like LA City? Like, right. Make it obvious. Um, (laughs) Not my mom watching TikTok in the corner. Am I not entertaining you? Are you not entertained? You what? Well, even when you turn your sound off, sometimes the volume will still like play on the videos. But if you just turn it down, then it goes down. Yeah. That happens to me all the time. Project Bluebeam. Bluebeam. Project Bluebeam. Okay. And this was an actual thing. Okay. This has just turned into a conspiracy podcast. Sorry, Rachel. (laughs) Don't fire me. Um, (laughs) But yeah, Project Bluebeam, it was a um, it was a government. uh, I don't know what to call it. Project that was developed back during the Cold War. And they were basically or no. What's and I love having my parents here. What's the war where everyone started rebelling for once? The Korean or the Vietnam? Vietnam. Okay, it was developed during the Vietnam War. Correct me down in the comments politely if I'm wrong. Um, but it was developed during some war where basically th- it was the first time in history where like the majority of the U.S. was fighting back against what the government was deciding to do. Yeah. Um, and so they developed 
Project Bluebeam, which was uh, saying that they were going to, I can't remember what it was. It was like they were going to, there was going to be a pandemic. There mm-hmm. was going to be mass electro- electrical shortages or like grid power outages or whatever so that we became more dependent on the government. Mm-hmm. There was going to be mass food shortages, which is happening right now. I was going to say, I think all of those things have yeah. happened within Pandemic, the last couple of years. The grid and the food, sh- food shortages. That's, that's why people are like buzzing about this. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, it's happening. It's happening. And the last, because of the Simpsons. Yeah, exactly. The last step of Project Bluebeam is that they were going to fake the uh what's it called when jesus comes again Re- oh resurrection no what's it called what's it rapture, rapture. yeah they're like our little fact checkers yeah. in the corner i love it <laughs> um yeah they were basically gonna fake either i mean it says like in the documents they're gonna wait did you see the tiktok where the the daughter says to her mom she's like oh, jesus spotted and she goes where where rachel where and she's like crying she's like show me him show me him <laughs> Okay, anyway. <laughs> I love that. TikTok. My mom would be so pissed she missed that. I'm <laughs> holding my comments back. <laughs> but anyway, so the last time of Project Bluebeam was that they were going to either it was going to be some mass alien invasion or it was going to be the rapture. Like they were going to fake an alien invasion or the rapture to basically scare the the U.S. population into becoming dependent on the government again. Yeah. Because if we're out of food, if we're out of electricity, if we're all sick. And, and there's now, aliens. Yeah, of course, we're going to run to Daddy Biden and be like, please protect me. Help. Uh, help. <laughs> so, I mean, that's like, that's like the giant conspiracy running around right now, just because everything happens to be lining up so perfectly. But no, I don't think the government is faking alien invasions. I think they're, it's literally happening. Yeah. And they're just like trying to keep it hush hush. But I'm not sure why. Like we all know. Yeah, everyone knows. We just know. bring it out. Bring it out, you know? Yeah. So anyway. My, my dad doesn't believe that there's aliens. So he thinks we live in this massive, giant, I don't know entire what that universe. man believes. <laughs> Again, I'm Except holding my Trump. comments. <laughs> it's not, I was going to say, I was like, no, I'm holding. I'm going to hold it back. I was gonna but I think even Trump believes in aliens. I don't know. Because wasn't he talking about leaking the files or whatever? Was he? Mom yeah, anyway. Remember. Oh, my God. We yeah. don't care about him. Yeah. Trump or your dad? Well, Trump, on. obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay. So is that it for our weird news yeah, stories? Yeah, that's all I got for the weird news stories. <sighs> that was good. Yeah. Okay. That was fun. I think for our big news stories, I know we wanted to talk. Again, it's all over the internet, so it counts. In and eight. We wanted to talk about the submarine that went missing. But then what else did I find? That sub, 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 sub. Everyone's talking oh, about the submarine. Everyone's talking about it. Before we get into the submarine. Yes. You tell, because you know the story better than I do. I just saw the video. What's her name? BB Rexa. Yeah, BB Rexa. I just know, I just saw the video of her on stage and this guy like chucks his phone at her, smacks her in the face. She goes down. They have to pull her off stage. She had to get stitches. Uh-huh. Her whole eye is swollen. Black I and heard blue. something from somebody else's TikTok that they felt like he was planning it because whatever song she was singing, um, so, like they had asked him like, oh, what's your favorite song or whatever? And he's like, I can't wait for this song to play. And that's oh. the exact song that he like chucked the phone at her. I hate playing devil's advocate. So I'm just going to pose this as a question. I have seen a new trend at concerts. It's not even new, but like it's become very popular recently is people will throw their phones onto stage yeah. so that the artists pick them up. And well, people have always, I feel like artists have always gotten things thrown at them in a good way or a bad way. Yeah. But like, maybe we should do something about that. Put some nets up or something. It's just so sad. It is. It's, I mean, it's dangerous. I don't want plexiglass between me and... Yeah, it's dangerous. I don't know who I'm seeing. Yeah. And yeah. then like people who get like bras and panties thrown at them, like, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Ew, don't do that. Oh. That'd be weird. Um, <laughs> I don't want your dirty. I don't want panties. Oh, and I hate that word. I don't want under- underwear thrown Chonies. at me. No, <laughs> we're done. Bye. Um, I don't mind a good bra being thrown at me. I mean, I just feel like you never know. Like, what if they put some weird chemical on it and you touch it and then you're seizing on the floor? Or you never know what people are Joy, gonna do. Joy has a lot of trauma. You never know. <laughs> well, didn't you hear about that one? thing where i don't know they were setting some drug in an envelope and people were like opening up the mail and touching it, it and during it was, 9-11 what was it there's a whole there was a yes yeah. yes like you just don't especially when you're a celebrity you just yeah. don't know yeah or you don't know what that person was doing like you just don't 
People are gross. You just don't know. I'm like, throw your bras at me. And Joy's like, oh, I don't want anthrax. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm I'm thinking like my initial, if I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, which I don't want to because he's a man that literally mm-hmm. assaulted a woman. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I if I had to, if I was a college boy named Chad and I was raising my hand in the back of the class and saying, oh, devil's advocate for a second, yeah. you know, I'm cosplaying him. I would say maybe he had hit the record button on his phone and was throwing his phone on stage, hoping she would pick it up and record herself because I have seen that being like a but trend. But like to chuck it where it hits her yeah. in the face. His aim was a little off. If that, if his intent was to get like a cool first video. I definitely video. think he should be um, arrested. Yeah. For sued assault. Or something. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You couldn't really just Maybe like. Maybe pay like medical bills. Like, And you know he overhanded that. Oh, it, yeah. definitely do you think he like wound and I, up first? I, I could be wrong but i saw a video of them everybody pointing out who it was and security was coming yeah down, and he just he didn't look guilty upset about it no. no it looked like something he wanted to do oh okay so, well then I, I take I, it I back know. this is all alleged i will not be cosplaying chad anymore yeah F if you guy. play stupid games you win stupid prizes there you go um okay so that happened bb raxa but she came online and she said she's like okay she's yeah. o- she obviously has literally she looks a awful, black the poor eye. girl yeah with a giant stitches but she was like you know i'm okay and that could have caused so much more damage yeah what if it like knocked out a tooth or something oh. i don't know yeah let's just not hurl electronic and then imagine the trauma you could have yourself though being an artist like having to perform back on stage wondering like, if someone's gonna throw something at yeah. you yeah i know it sucks Okay, so we have to talk about the most viral thing on the internet right now. Dun, dun, it exploded dun. overnight. Um, the missing, is it called a submarine? That's what they're calling it. Okay, it's we called the Titan. Underwater minivan. <laughs> Accurate. Um, <laughs> so basically, if you haven't been on the internet for the past 24 hours. <laughs> um, if you live under a rock. Yeah. There, although it does surprise me, things that I think are so viral and mainstream, I'll talk to someone about and they'll be like, no this thing is everywhere it's on all the major news stations yeah like it's everywhere all the major public yeah so if you're not talking about it somebody around you is talking about it yeah so what's your excuse well you come here for your news and now we're telling you so uh this is not a news source (laughs) thank you yes good job (laughs) cosplaying rachel um so yeah there was this there's this company called ocean gate which right out the bat right (laughs) ocean gate Gate. like yeah Yeah, it just sounds why did you choose that? I don't. It just sounds like it's waiting for a disaster. Right. Ocean Gate. Not yeah. Titanic Submerge or like. Um, um, what would um, you call it? Underwater Bathtub Co. <laughs> I don't know. Come swim with us, Co. Um, Divey Co. Yeah. Life experiences in the ocean. Yeah, I don't not, know. Not Ocean Gate. <laughs> don't come to us for your business names. Please don't. <laughs> um, but yeah. So this company called Ocean Gate, they developed a underwater craft uh, where it, <laughs> it can hold. They made it in their garage when they were 20 years old. Honestly, it's kind of what it looks like. Right, use some solid duct tape. Solid duct tape camping gear. <laughs> um, yeah, they developed this little craft. It can fit five to six people, depending on how far you want to scrunch up. But yep. basically, they said it's the size of a minivan. Yes. Um, and what it does, what the whole point of this excursion is, is you pay, go ahead, $250,000 per person. Two. I mean, <laughs> Is that all? That's it. Wow. We should do it tomorrow. <laughs> we'll save up. Um, we'll save up. <laughs> you know, I think like in, let me do the math, 467 years I could afford it. So, you know. Here's to Elon Musk developing a, uh, has the computer been in front of me this whole time? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am never allowed to podcast again well, outside. Well, I just put, put just put like Blaze's face there or something. Dilly's face. I thought I had scooted it far enough away. Oh my god, we gotta start over. No, at this point I'm leaving it. If you're just listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast and you're not watching on YouTube, the yeah. giant MacBook computer has been sitting and blocking half of my body this entire time. And we're both blind, so we couldn't see it. And the camera's really far away because Rachel took her normal podcast camera with her to New Zealand so that she could vlog and, you know, do internet things. So I'm using my camera that I bought a couple of years ago, and the lens is massive. And so we're like, Mom, how far away are we? 15 feet away from the camera. So we look like little dots on the screen, and I can't see us. So I don't know if we're in focus. I don't know if the lighting's good. And apparently I have a MacBook 
uh, not a MacBook, a Mac computer right in front of me. So, yep. So, okay, great. So back to Ocean Gate. Um, they developed this thing, uh, this little underwater craft, um, and you pay $250,000 and you get to go on it and they will take you on a seven day excursion down to go see the Titanic remains. Wait, so being on the submarine is you're on it for seven days? No. So oh, I was going to say, I didn't think it was that long. Yeah, because the Titanic crashed in the middle of the Atlantic. I know that much, but like, it's really far away from Europe and it's really far away from the U.S. It's like directly in the middle of like the U.S. and Europe. Basically, my mom says close, so suck it. Um, and so you can't just like walk there. <laughs> take, a, take Yeah, you can't just like take a little boat ride out there. It's right. not casual. So you pay the $250,000. You're on this massive boat, like barge looking thing. Yeah. And so you're traveling out to, uh, you know, the surface of where the Titanic crashed for a few days, um, you know, while living a life of luxury. And then they have the minivan underwater minivan on this barge and then you climb in once you like get on top of the crash but it's two miles down yeah so it's like it's a a a big gamble which doesn't seem that far when you think it like two miles doesn't sound it doesn't sound that far but when i've seen like graphics of like how far down it actually is it's it's scary yeah so then you get you climb onto this little mini submarine that can fit five to six people apparently they have to poo in a little plastic bag yeah no you're bathroom two, you're telling me you're paying two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and you to have poo to poo in a ziploc in a bag? Zip-lock bag yeah no but at least they have a window and it's like freezing cold freezing cold yeah so they basically bundle up hop into this little submarine and then um what happens is there are people on the original barge that you took to get out there and they are tracking this little mini submarine and telling the submarine where to turn and where to go because apparently once you get a few dozen feet down i don't know um it's pitch black yeah it's pitch black it's really silty yeah is that the word silty? i don't know silty Sounds my good. mom's Run my, with it. yeah my mom's shaking her head yeah um so there's like lots of like debris in the water and they have said i cannot wrap my head around this but they have said that the submarine itself does not have location on it so like i don't get that how do you have a craft that you put in the water with billionaires yeah. on it and you don't have a GPS? Or you know how some of the little like drone underwater drone things yeah. like they're 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 connected to a really long like wire string I or something. I was thinking that too. It's like you don't have anything yeah. to like you d- you couldn't find 2 miles of rope? <laughs> Hello? So- I got a dog leash that's too much. Yeah. No, <laughs> so yeah, so when the submarine goes down into the water, they have uh, and this is what I don't understand. They have a, some type of location device that pings back up. No, they said it's through texts. That's what they said. No, 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 no. I'm getting confused. Rewind. Blah, blah, blah. You're just making stuff up now. Well, they do have, <laughs> they do have texting okay. on there. Um, and like that. Was Wait, their, so you can text? Their, that was their form of communication on there is they would text back up to the barge and then the barge would text down to them. So the barge would be tracking this little mini submarine and they would tell them like, turn 30 degrees east. No. Turn 30 degrees west. No. Nope. You know, to like, direct them towards the titanic no because you can't see it until you're right up on it no you can't see it and but then there should be if they're doing this pretty often they should they should set something up like i'm something that you follow that's just like signs like this way almost there just floating in the middle of the open ocean yeah yeah. that is not problematic for the whales at (laughs) all titanic 300 feet away (laughs) when you what is it at the amusement parks where they're like if you're in this place in line you're 20 minutes away from the ride right yeah (laughs) um they should just have what, the, the car inflatable like something else that like guides them like i don't know like like a dolphin or something train a dolphin <laughs> to guide them down there no, i don't I mean, know like, like a drone or something like those things that do have all of that technology yeah like something that goes in front of them that they like i just yeah. don't understand it sounds so not i can't understand <laughs> i can't understand if this is just out of my ability to comprehend because it's so scientific or if they really were that stupid right well uh, it's being controlled by a remote controller that's like like a game controller it literally is a ps5 controller yeah so how they steer it from the inside they have like two me on fortnite (laughs) yeah like they he literally bought a ps5 controller this is not made up he bought a ps5 controller and programmed it to be able to steer and who is he are they like scientists technology people like how how can they do this I don't know. I want to say how he is was... this even legal? Well, How is the Titanic like... not even a protected like 
Oh, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and we found out because I was like reading a lot about this and we uh, just went out to brunch with my parents and had a long drive home. And so I was reading about it in the car. But um, basically, they were saying that the boat was the when I heard about this, I was like, oh, the boat's going to go down and circle around. Yeah, the I Titanic. can't wrap my head around this. They were going inside the Titanic. They were literally like that. So picture like a minivan inside of a boat or a ship. You have to think about how big that sh- thing is right but like isn't that a risk too because if it's so old like what if you mm-hmm. hit something isn't it gonna crash down on top of you uh-huh. or like well they said in like i don't and i don't know who they is but i saw on tiktok that they were saying there's so much bacteria down at the bottom of the ocean that it's like literally eating away at the, like the titanic's not gonna exist in a few decades yeah so like if the bacteria is eating away at the titanic that means it has to be very yeah fragile so if you accidentally bump into something yeah how would it not come that's collapsing? probably what happened that's that's one of the theories. Do they know if they made it to the Titanic before they lost? Oh, Mm-mm. nope. So so they so we don't even know if they got there. <laughs> yeah. So they they the intent was to get down to the Titanic using this barge up top, directing them on where to go. But at some point, like an hour, maybe two hours into the mission, they lost communication. The texts weren't going through. The location just like dimmed out. They they couldn't get a hold of them anymore. Um, and they were probably freaking out. Oh my God. Lit. No. With all the people too, they have on board. Yeah. So it was six people. It was five billionaires and the person manning the craft. And, uh, oh, I thought my dad was getting up. He's just adjusting. Um, but yeah, the, the plan was, is to find a way into the Titanic, take them down the grand staircase. Cause that's the like most icon besides like the, what's the top of the ship called? The hull. No, like the point where Rose was like, I'm flying, Jack. The bow. The bow is the most like iconic thing. And then the grand staircase. And so the, the idea was to take them around the bow and then to take them down the grand, grand staircase and to like show them the inside of the Titanic. Uh, no. 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 Um, but yeah, so they lost communication. So it has been, they got lost on Sunday afternoon. Yes. Morning afternoon. Yes, they got sometime. lost on Sunday. And it's now Wednesday evening and they still haven't found them. And so uh, at the point where they got lost on Sunday, they had 90 hours of oxygen. And so they're saying like uh, officially right now, it's their last few hours if they're going to run out or not. What an awful way. Uh Uh-huh. And that is, if nothing catastrophic happened quickly, like what a slow way to Mm. go. What a dark, like I just couldn't even imagine how scary that is. If you run out of oxygen, do you just like fall asleep? I eventually you do you pass out it's not fun you're like heaving for a minute you're like oh. <gasps> and then you pass out no but when you get to that point where you can't breathe and you pass out I heard your body releases like these chemicals like in your brain or whatever so it almost feels like you're like high in a sense or something like it's some sort I can't remember what the chemical is called but it's some sort of chemical where like it numbs you I don't think you feel pain at that point and then you like slip away what, what was it endorphins yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um that's the way so if you stick it out i think it could be a little, a little fun yeah I'm but the pan- but the panic up yeah, until no. then oh my god no so, and so, just looking around at each other like and one guy has a son with him yeah 19 so 19. sad so like i know a lot of people online are like laughing at this whole thing because they're billionaires and right so the whole joke is like the ocean is eating the rich for us right you know um but it's still sad it's still like because again because we're such empaths i put myself in their literal body and i'm like oh my god how would i terrifying and then i think about their families and like i couldn't imagine loving the titanic that much no to where you think that's a good idea right and other people pulled out of the trip so yeah at that point with other people pulling out too like we want to go skydiving if you like read some stuff and you're like know it I'm pulling out. Right. I would pull out too. And those people pulled out because they of found the safety. out. safety. Uh, yeah. In 2018, the Ocean Gate got sued for safety concerns and they settled outside of court. And so the two people that pulled out right before they were supposed to go on this excursion, yeah. they found out about the lawsuit that was supposed to be very hush hush and like, you know, whatever. They didn't want anyone finding out. Um, and they found out about it. And so they're like, no, we're not going on this. Also, apparently, um, the, the vessel the tight the titan why can't i say that titan the titan um it's bolted from the outside so one is one of the safety in big quotes one of the safety precautions is if something were to go wrong they can they can resurface right and then the boat would pull them in and you know they could come out so even if they had resurfaced they clearly didn't resurface around the boat because and like and there are so many other countries that are volunteering crafts to look for them so they're searching this giant 
like area of ocean and no one has seen the boat resurface. There was one report from a helicopter that they saw something white and minivan sized floating in the ocean, but they didn't send anyone to go check it out because at the same time that the aircraft spotted this floating thing in the ocean that looked like the sub, a few miles away, they heard banging from oh, down wow. below. So they were like, oh, that must not be it. They, they must be over here where we hear the rhythmic oh, banging. Oh my, you might as well, you have to just like, okay, track, like, let's come back to that. Yeah. And so even if they did reach the surface, they can't get out. So they'd still suffocate. Uh huh. It's bolted with 17 bolts from the outside. The only way they can get out is to be pulled back onto the boat and the bolts taken out. Oh my god. So even gosh. if they made it to the surface, can't get out. Mm mm. No. They really made this thing thinking accidents will never happen. Right. So, and they've, they've sent a bunch of like um, sonar devices into the ocean to try and find them and like that is the little glimmer of hope right now is they said they can hear every 30 minutes from this one spot they can hear rhythmic banging from every 30 minutes yes and so they're like that must be them but at this point I have seen especially in like the last hour or two I have seen where they have said even if they know exactly where they are they yeah. can't get them up yep because they're like there's a handful of devices in the entire world that can access that far down in the ocean because of like the pressure and i don't know whatever it requires to get down there yeah and even if they could get down there those devices aren't capable of dragging something up to the surface so there's just no good answer at this point no it's freaking awful yeah that's so awful do you think they're gonna find it i don't know but we were we were watching it again this is off of tiktok so i don't know how accurate this is but we were watching this tiktok and this mortician was saying because it's so cold down there and because they will use up all of the oxygen in the tank if they ever do find the titan and they bring it to the surface the bodies will be perfectly preserved Ugh. because it's like below freezing down where they are and there's so no wild. oxygen and oxygen is required for decomposition but i wonder if anything like let's say they do have to retrieve their bodies. Yeah. Um, they have to still bring them out through the water because they can't bring the submarine up with them, right? I think, I don't know, maybe. Because there's nothing, I think they said there's nothing they can do to help surface the. They said the other crafts that were capable of searching for them. Yeah. But like, let's say, a cra I mean, this is just me completely making this up. But in my head, I'm like, okay, if, a, if one of those crafts that can't drag them to the surface finds it, then maybe that craft could take like cables down or something. I don't know. And then they could like, hoist it like something up top Maybe, like I the barge know. could hoist it back up I don't know yeah, I don't know I don't know science but yeah what uh, yep so that's I feel like new information is coming out like every like yeah. 30 minutes yeah, yeah 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 so we'll see hopefully they I mean for the family's sake like hopefully they hopefully they do find them oh I know even if yeah, yeah. that's sad yeah yeah so. I couldn't imagine not ever knowing like what happened to a family mm -hmm. member or somebody that you care about mm -hmm. like that poor boy who jumped over the ship oh my god yeah that was awful. that is so sad and yeah. just to think about how scared he probably was in his final moments like i just couldn't imagine. yeah if you don't know there was a another viral video that w popped up like last week and it was some boy he had just graduated high school he went down to like bermuda or the bahamas yeah or one of those somewhere yeah. tropical some tropical island and um and he was with his classmates. They were doing a, a graduation trip. And he was on like one of those pirate party boats. Yeah. And they were all drinking and the music was really loud. And they were out in the middle of the ocean. And someone dared him to jump off the side and was filming it. And so drunkenly. In the dark. It was nighttime. Oh, yeah. It was like 10 p.m. He jumped off the side of the boat. And obviously the boat kept going because you can't hear He was that. gone fast. And he, yeah, and he got dragged behind because the boat kept going. So they threw him a life ring and he started swimming towards the life ring and then saw something in the water and started swimming away from yeah, the life something ring. something definitely um, popped up out of that water. Yeah. And I mean, the video is so grainy. And I feel like they didn't get on that search. It, like this happened on a Tuesday or something like that. Maybe in the beginning of the week. And the, and the people didn't go Coast Guard or whatever. They didn't go out to look for him until like Thursday or Friday. What? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think it took a couple of days for them to go out and search for him. And that didn't strike me as that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. But in the video, the reason the video went viral, besides it being like a very tragic yeah. incident, is because if you slow down the video and you bump up the exposure, it really does look like a shark comes out and grabs him. A lot of people are saying, no, that's just like the splash from the boat. It does look a little weird. I do yeah. know, though, that they their final thing was that he's lost at sea. Yeah. And I think the d family did make a statement saying that they want all the shark stuff to stop 
being thrown out there because we don't know what happened to him. Oh, like so they, I, don't, okay. I don't think they want to think that that's yeah the, you know. the way he went. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. Well, thank you for coming to Morbid Hour with <laughs> Joy and Emily. Is there anything good we should mention before we go? I feel like we should end on a positive. What note. good has happened? <laughs> what good is happening in the world? Um. Okay. Blue whales return to California at levels not seen before by the whaling industry. Okay, that's nice. Oh, could you imagine? This, this article says, wow. Go ahead. Woman finds four plates for $6 made by Picasso. She started crying in the, thr- in the thrift store. They've been verified that they're made by Picasso. She probably wow. got them for like two fifty dollars a piece. How much do you think they're worth? Uh, I'm going to look. You know what it's going to say. Okay. Oh, okay. So she said the price was listed on a sticker at one ninety nine per plate right next to the name Picasso. How do you not? And she just quickly is like, I'll take these. Yeah. Don't yeah. look at it. Too don't much. don't yeah. turn it over. <laughs> yeah. Um, and let's see. She checked out for a grand total of $6 and ran back to her office to do some research. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Oh, they're worth $4,000 each. Nice. Yeah. There's a bidding war happening right now over her Picasso plates. And right now it's so reaching. So there's a bidding war. It's going to get it's gonna get obviously yeah Yeah. isn't that wild that's awesome yeah all right last good news i always wanted to be one of those people that found one of those like rare pennies that was worth like a million dollars does that exist yes what if some if it's like in a certain time and made from copper or not copper or i don't know but there's some pennies out there that are worth a lot of money somebody found a penny once um not found but it was given back to them in their change at mcdonald's and i think it was worth like twenty eight thousand dollars who do you sell collectors that to? buy them oh okay because that was my first question yeah who's gonna <laughs> buy a penny for that much right all right this is our last thing it says nasa and boeing have unveiled the plane that they hope will save the earth the aim is for the experimental aircraft to help reach a net zero aviation emissions goal by 2050 so basically if you don't know flying is like one of the worst things you can do for the environment mm-hmm. i mean besides like i don't know this is like a, a big debate i have with myself all the time is like our earth is effed because of giant corporations not because of the individual right i mean supporting these giant corporations yeah that's that's your blame as an individual but right. like at some point they become such a monopoly we don't have a choice like someone right. said to me the other day they're like how do you not eat at chick-fil-a but you still shop off, off of amazon and i'm like because amazon is a monopoly i literally there is nowhere else on the internet unless i want to leave my home which a lot of times like i couldn't when i had daisy like yeah. i can't just pack up and leave and run to target real quick or like i do have so much work to do or like the store wouldn't have something available. So it's like Amazon is the only place on the internet. <clears throat> I got a little tickle in my throat where I can shop in that way. Yeah. It, but I can find a chicken sandwich anywhere. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you, you got to look at certain things certain ways. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, flying is one of the worst things that you can do for the environment um, because of it's like, what's it called? A carbon offset or some your carbon emissions. Yeah, your carbon footprint. And so it's, it's saying that NASA is trying to develop a plane that would have zero oh, carbon, carbon emissions, oh, emissions wow. which would be really nice. I won't be the first one nope. in it. No. <laughs> nope. Never be the first. Never be the first. <laughs> Never. <laughs> anyway, all right. Do you have anything else you want to add or anything positive you want to you tell the, the listeners? Hmm. No? no? I think. Dad, would you like to come tell one dad joke? Oh, he's coming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you see how fast he hopped up. (laughs) All right, my dad's name is Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Oh, no, a little further. A little closer. Okay, and you have to talk. Yeah, you have to talk right into the mic. Okay, so I went to a wine tasting on Saturday, and it was some chilled white wines. And the lady sitting next to me said, oh, summer wines. And I said, no, they're all wines, not just some. (laughs) No. Him this, don't give him the satisfaction. <laughs> dad, you, we can do Summer better. Summer wines. No, they're all, all wines. wines. All right, Dad, hit us with one more. One more. Mm. I'm, I put him right on the spot. What is brown and sticky? Oh, A God. stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That was a good one. That was, that was a good, good one. Right. Well, thank you for joining us today for this very a uh, morbid therapeutic <laughs> dad joke version of ATI technically everything we talked about was found on the internet so a plus for us don't tell Rachel don't tell Rachel please <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right well thank you everyone for joining Joy do you have anything else no all I'm right. sorry if the beginning was a little heavy everybody I'm okay <laughs> no that's why we have therapy corner yeah, okay, okay yeah 
Um, so they yeah. probably were expecting me to say another dog died or something. <laughs> no, no, mom. <laughs> anyway, too soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're thriving. We're thriving. Um, sorry, a giant computer was in front of my body this whole time, and sorry, the lighting was weird, and. Uh, sorry you saw Blaze licking his butthole on my bed and I love you and appreciate you for sticking around and please don't leave us hate comments because I will cry uh, <laughs> and I literally can't afford therapy right now so please please don't <laughs> um all right thanks so much we love you bye, bye. oh wait wait uh, okay hold on we gotta do it in unison Ooh, sorry mom okay yeah I'm sorry okay ready three two one bye, bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this week's episode of All Things Internet. Please make sure to like and follow our podcast on whichever platform you're currently listening to it on. And make sure to follow us at Podcast ATI on Twitter, where you can ask questions and get the latest updates on our show. We love you. Thanks for listening. I'm Rachel Ballinger, and this has been All Things Internet.